Alright guys, BLM here back with a new video and in this video I'm back redoing another one of my videos from five years ago where this ended up being one of the first survivor videos I ever did in a video that did get a very mixed reception though I will be redoing it here and that is my who would I vote for for survivor I'll be running through every season of the show and talk about who I would have voted for out of that season's finalists which last time I did this was during the airing of survivor edge of extinction and obviously since then we have had eight more survivor seasons and also who knows maybe some of my opinions on some situations have changed spoiler not many of them have so we're running through them in chronological order starting it off with season one borneo where we have rich versus kelly and again my opinion doesn't really change here my vote would still go to rich pretty easily though i will say if i was voting based on how the game played out up until the final eight or so when kelly starts to go rogue i actually probably would have been leaning towards kelly over rich Considering I feel like it's Kelly's screw up towards the end of the game and her having to win out at the very end that does make me not want to vote for her where outside of that I don't feel like Rich played the greatest game in the world. I feel like Kelly was a much more active player earlier on. But either way Rich does play a solid enough game and definitely showed a lot of understanding of the game so I still would have voted for Rich. Rush on not back. We have Tina versus Colby. And I, I think over time I've become more and more solidified in the fact that I would have voted for Tina. There definitely was a point where I was definitely pro Colby over Tina. I do feel like that has changed over time, particularly due to the fact that she was the one to convince Colby to flip over. Vote out Mitchell, which is something that benefited Tina much more than it benefited Colby. And it really feels like Colby was playing the game a lot of it for Tina within making moves that were against his best interest to get to the final two with Tina. So while I think you can maybe argue still that Colby had more control in the game, I feel like the points that he did, he kind of mismanaged them and did things to benefit Tina, while Tina also... Again, made the move to flip over Colby, and from that point forward, remained the best position within her core alliance, where essentially she was guaranteed the win by the time of the final three. So again, at the end of the day, I do lean towards Tina here. Next up for Africa, and we have Ethan versus Kim. And again, this one's also pretty easy. Again, Kim, while in the majority alliance for most of the game, was very much on the bottom of that alliance, and obviously needs to win the last few immunity challenges to get to the end. Ethan, I think, played a much more consistent game. Now, I think the issue is the fact that, again, he wanted to go to end of Lex, which would have been a very close vote there and I think that's something to definitely demerit Ethan with but again in comparison to Kim I don't think it's that much of an argument I would have easily voted Ethan next up for Marquesas we have Vesepia versus Nalia and this is still a very tough decision for me I do think this is a jury vote that I always waver on just because Vesepia I do think is the more active player I think Vesepia had more awareness of what she was doing and obviously faced a lot more adversity while I feel like Nalia again didn't really know what she was doing but actually probably had more of an impact on the game itself where Vesepia was really just on the bottom of whatever alliances she was in constantly throughout the season while Nalia while on the outskirts of the Rotu alliance initially obviously flips at the merge a position that Vesepia was forced into but Nalia actively flips she is the person to flip over Pascal to cause the John Carroll vote to happen well Vesepia was just kind of there at the mercy of Nalia seeming to have the least amount of impact on that move actually happening and she also fails to flip over Kathy at five and it feels like most things that Vesepia does in this game are simply because she's forced to. I, I do think this is a pretty close vote, though I think I would give the edge to Nalia here. Next up for Thailand, we have Brian versus Clay, and begrudgingly, I would have the vote for Brian, which I really wouldn't want to. I really don't respect a lot of the ways that Brian played the game, utilizing taboo subjects like racism and misogyny as core aspects of his game, but again, he's against Clay, which is like, is it that much better? So at least from a game perspective, perspective there is obviously a wide difference where Brian obviously dominates the game from beginning to end Clay is simply just there with Brian being dragged to the end as a go again there is a big difference gameplay wise but I do feel like just personally I wouldn't want to vote for Brian but in this instance I would begrudgingly do so next up for Amazon and this has always been a tough one for me as well where here we do have Jenna versus Matthew and my big struggle here is that I do think Jenna is probably the better player I think Jenna knows the game better has more awareness of her game to a degree however i also feel like jenna's end game is really bad 
with her constantly wanting to quit, her throwing Rob under the bus, even though Rob is the only person that wants to keep her. You have her obviously needing to win those final few immunity challenges. And, and just as a whole, I don't love Jenna's endgame in comparison to Matt, who I think has a very rough, like, first two-thirds of the game. We're really up until the point where Jenna loses control. Matt's game is pretty abhorrent. I mean, he is on the bottom of the men's tribe and probably the next to go if they ever go to another tribal. He falsely thinks that he's very close to Rob when Rob's really just using him and he was really the next to go until Rob obviously flips. However, once Rob flips, again, I feel like he plays pretty well. Now, again, it's kind of too late because he lost all the respect that he could have possibly had in the game, but he does get to the very end of the game being really secure, having final twos with both Rob and Butch, also building a final two with Jenna. Again, for me, it is very close, where I think Matthew's endgame to me is stronger than Jenna's, but really the first two-thirds of Jenna's game is much stronger. However, I do feel like I personally probably would have voted for Matthew if I was on the island. Again, knowing that Jenna had to win out at the very end, knowing that Jenna tried to quit the game. For me, I think that's kind of the tiebreaker here to where I would probably lean towards Matthew in this situation. Next, for Pearl Islands, we do have Sandra versus Lil, and I mean, this one's easy considering the fact that Lil got voted out, came back to the game, so through that, I would vote for Sandra. However, if it was not for that fact, I would vote for Lil. I do think Lil had more control over the game. I think she dictated a lot of how the game played out. I mean, as I talked about my Pearl Islands retrospective, a lot of people talk nowadays as if it was assumed that Lil was going to be this big goat, and that's why she had so much control when by watching the season and actually analyzing how people are playing that's simply just not the case it's actually the opposite people assume that she was a big jury threat with the likes of dara in particular being someone that gets taken out because she let lil know that she thinks of her as a big jury threat so again i very much would have voted for lil had it not been for the fact that she got voted out but she did so through that i vote for sandra again I don't think Sandra played a particularly great game on this season. I think she kind of stumbles her way through a lot of the game. And not denying that there are positive attributes to Sandra's game for sure. However, I just feel like as a whole, I probably respect the type of game that Lil played in the back half of the season more than Sandra. But in this situation, I would vote for Sandra. Next for all stars, we get Amber versus Rob. And this is an easy one. I would vote for Boston Rob. I mean, I do think Boston Rob's game on the rewatch is definitely a lot sloppier than I remembered in the sense that he is just kind of bad socially on the season where he constantly like taunts people for like no reason. Again, there is definitely bad jury management there. However, I do fully believe he had most of the control for the season. I mean, really, I think it is his relationships that got Amber through the game, got her to the merge. And again, Rob really just has control over the game from beginning to end. Now, again, I do give Amber a bit more credit now than I used to in terms of how she's working alongside Rob. However, I still feel like there are many instances where the two are talking strategy and while Amber is giving her points, they still end up landing on what Rob wants to do. And really, most of the time also, what Rob wants to do is the better call strategically anyway. So again, I do feel like for me, it's not particularly close here. I would vote for Rob. Next up for Vanuatu, where Chris versus Twilight. And this is actually one of the few final two scenarios that I've already talked about that I am actually going to change where before I said I would have voted for Twyla I actually think I would vote for Chris nowadays now I still stand by the points I made previously and the fact that obviously Chris ends up in the minority post merge and while he does recover from that the fact that he does lose the majority for a few rounds is definitely a major knock against him especially considering part of it is due to mistakes that he makes on his own however I do think his recovery is pretty strong now at the end of the day the final seven round in particular is around that I think he gets a bit too much credit for and even beyond that I do think his final six and final five rounds are a bit questionable and like why are you blindsiding Eliza and Julie during those rounds but I think he does do very good work in actually pulling Twyla over and this is something that I think I probably give him more credit for now than I used to which is why I would give him the vote over Twyla is the fact that Twyla actually was loyal to Chris. Twyla was actually going to vote out Scout over Chris if she had one final immunity. And I think the impressiveness of that move of Chris to pull Twyla away from her number one from the beginning of the game is pretty impressive there. And also, I just feel like Chris is probably the better all-around player than Twyla anyway. So again, my vote here would probably go to Chris now. Next up for Tom versus Katie. And this is one where I would vote for Tom. Now, I think my opinion of Tom has gone down over time where I think my my issue with Tom, despite how dominant of a game he plays, or at least it seems to play until the end game, my issue is the fact that a lot of that seems to come from this notion that they just assumed Tom would get picked off eventually. However, he just never really gave them many opportunities to do so because he just won comps. And at this point, I do kind of like knock more away from him in the fact that he won so many comps because I do think it just gave them less opportunities to even possibly think about taking him out. And I'll be honest, like I actually would 
consider voting for Katie. Do I think I would have by the end? Probably not. I, I do think Katie was a player that was mostly dragged through the game because no one really saw her as a threat. No one really thought she was going to win the game. However, I feel like if there was more gusto to her game, I definitely would have considered her over Tom, but there simply wasn't. So in this instance, again, I would vote for Tom at the end. Next up for Danny versus Stephanie, and this is a very difficult one as well, where... At the time, I did say I would have voted for Danny, and I came into the process of making this video thinking I was going to switch that to Steph, but I did end up still landing on Danny. And the reason for that is because I do feel like Stephanie, despite having more control over the game, and she was alongside Rafe really running a lot of the game, my issue is the fact that I feel like she lets Rafe essentially make all the decisions for her. A lot of the decisions that were made were decisions that benefited Rafe, or at least benefit what Rafe wanted more so than Stephanie, where her cutting the likes of Judd and Jamie were just terrible gameplay from Stephanie's end. But mixing that in with the fact that I don't really fault Danny that much for being on the bottom where yes Danny is on the bottom for a lot of the post merge and I would typically demerit her for that however the reason I don't is because again like she just simply is on the bottom at the merge because she just comes into the merge with less numbers she simply just lost the wrong post swap challenges that led to her coming into the merge with less numbers it's simply just not something that she actively does wrong it's not like Chris where I feel like Chris could have came into the merge with more numbers but then she kind of but just kind of botched that opportunity. Danny didn't really have that opportunity. And if Danny did come to the merge, I do feel like she would have been in a very strong spot to begin with. So the fact that she faced that adversity and was still able to overcome that, and essentially getting Rafe to do things that benefited her, again, I feel like that is pretty decent work. So because that, I do think I would have voted for Danny here. Next up for Aris versus Danielle. And this is another one of these instances where I think a while ago I would have voted for Danielle over Aris. I do think that's changed over time. I think my opinion of Aris's game probably goes up slightly over time, where again, I still think it was Suri that was doing a lot of the strategic work for the duo however R still had to build that bond with Suri and while I do think there are many points in the game that I can call out his strategic fallacies I do feel like at the end of the day against Danielle I think he's just outright better again he was the one that built a stronger bond with Suri that had Danielle always at the bottom of their three now I will say I do think Danielle was the more dynamic player to where the fact that she goes over to Terry and works with Terry just to cut him in the following round again I feel like that's something that I used to give her a lot of credit for though considering that was a mostly reactionary move and not one very proactively done and also was Terry really have to lose at that point either I feel like it is pretty close between the two however the fact that Suri's intention was always to go to final two with Aris does make me lean towards Aris in this situation next up for Cook Island we're at the final threes we have Yule versus Ozzy versus Becky and this one's pretty easy I would vote for Yule again for me personally it's not that close Obviously, between Yul and Becky, obviously Yul is the alpha. Becky wasn't really doing much to actively aggress her game. She was mostly playing the game in a way that benefited Yul. While with Ozzy, again, Ozzy just won challenges in a position where he would have been voted out had he not won those challenges, particularly at the very end of the game. Now, you can obviously argue that Yul had the god idol, and that protected him at four in a position where he could have potentially been in danger, which is true, and that does harm my placement of him on a winner ranking, though just in this comparison here, I do feel like Yul is by far the more active player here being the one that convinced Penner to flip over through using his idol and also held the control at the post swap tribe and just all around pretty much dominated the game from beginning to end so because that again my vote would go to Yule next up for Fiji and we have Earl versus Cassandra versus Dreams and this one's not particularly close my vote would easily go to Earl I mean Earl really ran the game from beginning to end I mean there was never really a point where he was outside of the majority alliance and it's kind of an insane stat considering the fact that he came from the have not tribe a tribe that got dwindled down early on and despite that coming in the swap he was able to rebuild it almost instantly now to be fair the way the game started where every player was on the same tribe together definitely benefited in that as he was paired out with a lot of people he was going to be aligned with early on but still he completely runs the game from beginning to end all while cassandra really doesn't do much in dreams made some pretty poor strategic moves at points and it's never really to respect him except because that for me i would vote for earl next for china we have todd versus courtney versus amanda and obviously it's between todd and amanda for me i mean courtney again not really my type of game courtney again to me didn't really play the active of a game between todd and amanda i think it would have been very close i think i would lean towards Todd considering Todd was probably the more active strategic player of the two we do see Todd doing a lot more in terms of maintaining his relations with James and with Jean Robert now I think there's an argument for Amanda considering Amanda was in a more dynamic position she was in a position where she could have 
potentially made more moves against Todd, but the fact that she never does is the reason why I would end up leaning towards Todd here. Next for Micronesia, we have Poverty versus Amanda, and this one's not particularly close for me. I would vote for Poverty. Again, Poverty created the Black Widow Brigade. She was the person to actually get each of the members together, to which they end up running the game. Now, once they formed, would I give her the most credit for how they maneuvered through the game? Not necessarily. I would give that more so to Sari. But again, Sari's not in this final tribal. So between Poverty and Amanda, I think Poverty was much better positioned within the Black Widow Brigade was also the founder of it. While Amanda was kind of a tag along in it, and even then needed an idol to survive the final six round. And just overall, again, her game's a bit messier to me. So because that, I would personally vote for Poverty. Next up for Gabon. And Gabon's a weird situation here where we have Bob versus Susie and Sugar. And for me, my vote would personally go to Sugar without any context to it. Like if I did not know where the other jurors were going, I would personally vote for Sugar. I think Sugar had the most amount of agency out of this final three. Mind you, it's because everyone looked at her as a goat, no one really respected her, but you know, I look at all three of these people as goats. I don't particularly find any of their games that impressive. So Sugar's game is the one that I think I respect the most of these three. However, knowing that no one was voting for Sugar and the vote was actually between Bob and Susie, in that instance, I would vote for Susie. Now, I think it is relatively close to where I think both of them played really terrible games. Bob was essentially just on the bottom of the Onion Alliance the entire time and really gets lucked out by the fact that Marcus gets taken out and his side ends up losing to where he even then needs to win out in challenges until the final four where he finally has a deal with Sugar that could have potentially kept him safe there and he gets unlucky if Susie's immunity win but then wins fire. In many ways, I look at him as a player that essentially needs to win out. When it comes to Susie, Susie was safe for most of the game. She just flipped the vote out Marcus. That's something. Post-merge, she's kind of just there. But then I have to massively demerit her for final four round where despite the fact that she is really just not that big of a threat to win the game as again this was her best case scenario and even here she doesn't win even then she was the initial target for the final four round and had to win final immunity and then that's bad but again at the end of the day between bob and Susie, i'll vote for Susie. Susie only needed final immunity bob needed what like three well i feel like there's more points where Susie proactively moves through the game while bob is just simply just sitting there at the bottom so for me, again, I would vote for Susie. Next up for Token Chains, we have JT versus Steven, and I stand by my opinion beforehand, I would vote for Steven. Where really for me, both of them played really strong games. I think both these are top tier winning games that they had won. JT obviously had this knack of getting the likes of Coach, Debbie, and Brendan essentially wanting to throw their games for him. And again, that is impressive. The problem is that he doesn't go to the end of those people. He goes to the end of Aaron and Steven, two people that were willing to cut him at the end, which I think is a major issue there. And he really essentially needed to win the last two immunities to get to the end while with steven again steven i think plays an equally strong game now i think steven is less integral in getting the timbiras to work with them however i do think he does a good job at maintaining that position once they get into that position and within the jalapal alliance itself i mean steven was better positioned than jt he had a closer bond in game with taj he had a closer bond with aaron and again did consider cutting jt at the end so again for me i do feel like steven was the better position throughout more of the game was also more of the strategic mind for the duo so because of that for me i would vote for steven next up for samoa and here we do have natalie versus russell versus mick and this one's pretty easy for me i would vote for russell now obviously russell does have a lot of social faux pas in his survivor career and may not be the most pleasant to be around however i do feel like on this season in particular i do feel like his game was pretty strong now again he did need an idol to save himself at final 11 though really it was just the faux faux as a whole were in the minority and were going to be picked over it was just kind of a circumstance of which one exactly they end up voting for there and even then that was a situation where shambo was actually on board and they were actually going to flip the game on laura moret had she not won immunity so again there's enough wonkiness there to where i don't completely demerit his game just from that and beyond that again he does play very impressively and flipping over shambo and john to vote out laura at the final of 10 and then maneuvering through the game pretty expertly towards the end game the problem is obviously his treatment of the players around him but while also really underestimating natalie white now i'm not really taking anything away from natalie white's game which i've gone to respect over time i just feel like it's the type of game that I personally am not going to vote for a type of game that is, again, more so reliant on the actions of your opposition more so than your own actions, where essentially that is the type of game Natalie White plays. A game of her latching on the Russell because she knows Russell's going to run the game, but then banking on the fact that he ruins his jury chances along the way for her to win, which again is a viable strategy. It's just not one that I personally 
cosine as one that I would want to reward. So because, that, again, I would vote for Russell here. Next up for Heroes vs. Villains, we have Sandra versus Poverty versus Russell. And really, for me, this situation is just anyone but Sandra. I, I would not vote for Sandra. I think Sandra got to the end in a way that was essentially because she failed at many of the things she tried to do in her game. In the last few days on the Villain Stripe, she's clearly on the bottom there, and a lot of people give her credit for saving herself over Coach, which I give her some credit. I don't give her that much credit in the fact that that was more so to placate the heroes and making them think that there was an all-women's alliance. And I feel like her, Courtney being voted over her was largely due to the pregame, not really anything that Sandra does there. And then after that, she's constantly trying to get Russell out and fails at it, and it's due to her failures that she stays in the game with him to the point where he drags her to the end where she obviously wins so again not really a game that i personally respect in terms of harvey versus russell i think that one's a bit closer now without context again without knowing that russell would get no votes i think i would actually probably lean russell just in the fact that again russell was more in control through the game now again it was misguided control to where i think a lot of the moves he makes are not optimal for his game and he is constantly burning his jury chances throughout the game however i also feel like Parvati's game isn't that flawless either. I mean, Parvati plays a game where she needed to have an idol played for her very early on in the game. And later in the game, we have Russell flipping against Danielle, against her best interests. And beyond that, we also have points where Parvati was potentially in danger. She didn't win the last few immunity challenges. And even at the final four, she was going to get voted out if it were not for the notion that Russell wanted Jerry on the jury as a potential vote for him. And again, like, I just feel like there's a lot of instances where Parvati's game in Heroes of Villains is just stuff happening around her with her not really having that much control over how it's playing out. So again, I do feel like it is a very mixed game as well. Again, I think I would vote for Russell unpromptedly of the three, though knowing that it's between Sandra and Poverty, obviously there I would vote for Poverty. Next up for Nicaragua, and here we do have Fabio versus Chase versus Sash. And for me, I think this is a pretty easy Chase vote. I mean, Fabio, again, would not vote for. He had to win out, didn't really have much say in really anything that was going on strategically in the game. So through that, it would be between Chase and Sash. Well, I do think Sash was screwed up over by two of his closest allies quitting the game and also one of his closest other allies and Brenda targeting him out of the blue and being forced to take her out. I just think Chase was better positioned through more of the game and was potentially in a winning position had Fabio not won out where he would have gotten to the end with Sash and Holly but obviously had the relationships with Holly with Jane he's a really central figure on the original LaFleur tribe as well again for me I do feel like Chase is the player that I probably would have voted for here next up for Ramsh Island we have Rob versus Philip versus Natalie and I mean what do you think I mean, obviously I'm voting for Rob and really it's just not particularly close I only think there's really an argument for me of why I would vote for Philip or Natalie over Rob so again I would personally vote for Rob next up South Pacific we have Sophie versus Coach versus Albert. And in this instance, I personally would vote for Coach. I still stand by this. Well, I think Sophie is a very good player. And again, I think she's in this like Nally White camp of actively playing behind Coach, thinking Coach is going to make missteps to where she would win the jury vote after that. Again, to me, it's still a game that is largely reliant on your opponent. And again, while she is right, that Coach would mess up her game and not have the respect by the end, would mess up his game and would not have the respect by the end. It is a game that I think is more reliant on luck than what I would personally want from my winner. But but again, I do think she is more strategically active in the game than someone like an Ally White to where I definitely have more respect for Sophie's game than most other people that try to play the game in her way. But I still think Coach had a lot more control through the game. Again, he is the one to flip over Cochran at the merge, which ends up being really the end all be all of the game. He's also really well positioned in the end game. And while that can be due to the fact that they assume coach was going to be a GOAT, I still think he does some pretty good work within it. Mind you, he also does some bad jury management with the likes of a Rick and Ozzy, a Brandon. But I still feel like as a whole, again, my vote would personally still go to coach. Next up, we got Survivor One World. Kim versus Sabrina versus Chelsea. And I mean, come on. I'm voting Kim. To me, I still think Kim's One World game is the best game ever played of Survivor. I think it is near flawless. I think really the only like minute flaws I can think with Kim's game are her obviously annoying Troy Zan to the point where he doesn't vote for her. Though, to be fair, I think that was just always going to be Troy Zan on this season of him being upset at the person that he credited the most with getting him out. While the other one and probably more of an actual flaw is her inability to bond with Leaf. Though, again, that's about it. I think her game is near flawless. She dominates the game from beginning to end. She is the leader of All Girls Alliance. She is the main strategist of that alliance. She wins a whole bunch of challenges along the way. She is masterful socially. I mean, she essentially had the game completely unlocked by the time of the final nine, which is pretty unprecedented. And by the time of the merge, a very likely winner. Again, like, I just feel like her game is near flawless. Now, I will say, Sabrina and Chelsea also play pretty solid games as well. I think Sabrina and Chelsea are players that I would rather vote for than some of the other winners that we've talked about so far. However, again, 
they're against Kim. And through that, there's no real competition here. I would vote for Kim. Next up for Philippines. And here we do have Denise versus Lisa versus Scoopin. And I stick by my opinion five years ago, I would vote for Lisa. And again, for me personally, I just never really got the love for Denise's game, where a lot of people give her a lot of credit for surviving every tribal, when for me, that doesn't mean anything. For me, all that really means is that she was on tribes that were so bad that they lost every pre-merge challenge to where she went to tribal. I, I think a lot of winners are people that if they had went to every single tribal, they would have never gotten voted out. To me, this is not a thing to really prop up Denise's game with. And beyond that, I don't think her post-merge game is particularly good. She's simply just there alongside Malcolm, working alongside him, kind of just blindly following him until the point where he makes an active mistake in letting her know that he's planning on voting her out four to where she finally flips the script there. But even then, Lisa was already planning on doing that anyway. Like to me, I, I just never really got the love for Denise's winning game. To me, it is a kind of mediocre one. Not saying that Lisa is the greatest player in the world or anything. However, I do think Scoop and Lisa were a lot more in the center of the game for a lot more of it. And mind you, part of that is due to the fact that people assumed that they would beat them. However, Lisa and Scoobin still had a winning scenario at the final five, a scenario that Lisa wanted to go through with, but was not able to convince Scoopin to go through with, which is obviously a flaw on her end though. Again, I do feel like Lisa had decent reads on the game. I think she was in a pretty strong position in the game and really was a much more active player in the post-merge than someone like Denise in my mind. So because that I personally would vote for Lisa. Next up for Survivor, Karamoan, we have Cochran versus Don versus Sherry. And this one's pretty easy for me. I would vote for Cochran. Now, I think there is a debate between him and Don. I do think Cochran and Don's games are not that, that dissimilar. Obviously, they work together throughout most of the season. They make the same moves. Don was probably better positioned in the game in the sense that Don had more of the connections that allowed them to make the moves that they did. My issue is the fact that a lot of the moves that they make are moves that benefited Cochran more than they benefited Don. And the fact that Don cuts Brenda at the final six is a big move there that is obviously a much better move for Cochran than it is for Don and when we see Cochran doing a lot more of the active work and getting that move through along with taking out Andrea and just seems to be the all-around more strategic player of the two again I personally would vote for Cochran here next up for Survivor Blood versus Water we have Tyson versus Monica versus Jervis and this is also a pretty easy one I would vote for Tyson Tyson was obviously the player more out in front he was the player that was really running a lot of the game the one that had the connections that allowed them to make the moves that they did he was the one to pull over Sierra to where they went out on the Caleb vote. He also was the one to pull away Jervis to pull off the Aris blind side. I, mean, I do think Tyson is by far the best player of the season. Now, again, I still have like little holes with how he plays certain aspects of his game. But again, in comparison to Jervis, he was obviously more out in front than Jervis. In comparison to Monica, he just had a lot more control over how the game played out than Monica. So again, for me, it's an easy Tyson vote. Next up for Kageon, the final, final two we're going to be talking about. We have Tony versus Wu, and it's obviously a vote for Tony. Again, it's not really close. Tony dominated the game strategically. Really manipulated Wu into doing moves that obviously benefited Tony much more. And obviously tricked Wu into taking him the final two to begin with. So again, overall, Tony by far gets my vote here. Next up, Sam Wando, sir. And again, nothing really changed here. Natalie versus Jacqueline versus Missy. My vote goes to Natalie. I think Natalie played the much stronger game on this season, particularly in the back half of the season. She really just runs the show from that point on. I mean, her idle play to take out Baylor is one of the most impressive moves in all of Survivor, along with her blind side of John. And the only real demerit to her game is obviously the Jeremy blindside though again, literally the other two were blindside other aspects of the game again Jacqueline at the John vote Missy at the Baylor vote both of which being again the two most impressive moments of Natalie's game so again, I do think as a whole Natalie plays a much stronger game than the other two again easily gets my vote here next up for Worlds Apart and I'll be honest this one is a struggle where we have Mike versus Carolyn versus Will. And for me, this is a final three where I think all three are kind of bad. Where you obviously have Mike, who is a person that needs to win out from the final nine on, which is a pretty ridiculous stat that he ends up actually doing so. But if he did not win any of those challenges or didn't have a single immunity idol in his pocket, he would have been voted out before the end. You have Carolyn, who did need an idol at the final six round. And even beyond that, again, was just simply not that respected while out there. While she does do some decent work in building her relationship with Mike to begin with, that keeps her safe throughout portions of the game she again never really seemed to be that well liked while out there and then you have will who despite the controversy of shireen was probably the most well liked of the three while out there and was probably the most stable presence of the three to where again i think there's a world where i would have at least considered voting for will 
However, I do think just the notion of actually voting for Will would have turned me away from voting for Will. But again, like, I think there is an argument to be made here that his game is the most consistent of the three. But I'll be honest, I really just don't know who I would vote for in this final three. Last time I did to Carolyn. And to be honest, I probably am going to stick with that here. However, I do think I have more of an argument for Mike in the modern day to where, while again, I do still have issues with the fact that he does have to win every challenge until the end, I do still think he makes the most of that opportunity. Or despite the fact that he does need to win out, he does still play the game actively at that point. He still is making sure that people that he needs to go are going home. He makes sure that Tyler goes home, who's his biggest physical threat at the final seven. He gets rid of Sierra at the final five and a vote that, and it just seems like everyone just kind of caters to what he wants to do there. And he still gets work done despite being in that position. But I think the fact that he's in that position for as long as he is, is what makes me struggle with voting for him to where I think I would end up just voting for Carolyn by the end. Next up for Survivor Cambodia, we have Jeremy versus Spencer versus Tasha. And I think this is a tough one here in the sense that I don't think it's that major of a difference between Jeremy and Spencer. Now, at the end of the day, I would vote for Jeremy. Jeremy was more in a power position for more of the game. He was in the majority really from beginning to end outside of, again, a couple like niche points. But even in, in those points, he's not the direct target at any point. Probably obviously the moment where Steven goes home. Now I will say I do not love his play at the final six. I did think he plays that round very sloppily. However, beyond that, again, he is in a power position for a lot of the game in a position where everyone knows how big of a jury threat he is. While with Spencer, again, I do think Spencer plays well considering the circumstances, considering the fact that he is down in numbers, loses a lot of his allies. He's able to rebuild from that pretty well. Obviously, he just struggles with gaining respect from the jury. But even then, he is part of the Kelly Wigglesworth blindside. He pulls off the Steven blindside. He is the one to recognize that Kimmy is flipping. Again, I do think there is good there to argue between Jeremy and Spencer. And to be honest, even Tasha, I would very much consider Tasha if it were not for the fact that she kind of just gives up her game towards the end for Jeremy. Where I think if she were more consistently playing for herself and making moves to benefit her over the likes of Jeremy, I would have more so considered Tasha as well. To me, I feel like all three of these final three definitely have an argument for getting my vote. However, I do think the fact that Jeremy was in the power position for more of the game, along with the fact that he reached the end game with a lot of win equity and still made it to the very end without truly needing to win out. Again, it does make me lean towards Jeremy here. Next up for Ko Rong, and here we do have Michelle versus Aubrey versus Ty, and right away, I'm going to eliminate Michelle. I would not vote for Michelle. Michelle needed to win out. Plus, also, she needed Joe to be medevac to get to the end. So, again, I'm not voting for Michelle. Between Aubrey and Ty, I think it's actually pretty close. Now, again, I think this is kind of a situation where I think Ty plays the most consistent game in the fact that he never was in direct danger. He didn't need any sort of really lucky circumstance to get himself to the end of the game. Where, obviously, Aubrey was saved by the Neo medevac where if it had not been for neil getting medevac she more than likely goes home during that round and i think that is something to debate here but i do think aubrey had a lot more agency in the game than ty i mean aubrey literally is the one that convinced ty to flip against his closest allies to side with her and also had the relationship with sydney that really ran a lot of the middle portion of the game and really in general i just have a lot more respect for how aubrey maneuvers through the game on this season the where despite there is that major faux pas at the merge i don't feel like it's enough to completely demerit her game to where i personally would still vote for Aubrey. Next up for Melanie Genex, we have Adam versus Hannah versus Ken. And I've said this before and I stick by it. I would vote for Hannah of these three. To me, Adam and Hannah's games are not that dissimilar. To me, their games are very similar. I think the only difference is perception, where we have Adam who is perceived as this strong strategic player, despite the fact that he was kind of on the bottom of his post-merge majority alliance he gets left out of the brett vote and constantly tries to get david out but is never able to convince his allies in doing so he obviously makes the misstep early on in the merge where that obviously makes him a big target for the opposing side again to me there's just like so many little mistakes from adam while hannah is again a more consistent player and really throughout the merge she is solidly within her group she's more trusted within her group and she was much more in a no in her group she is the person that stops adam from taking out david throughout most of the game and again most of the jury looks at this as a bad move to keep David in the game for as long as they do. However, I do think for 
Hannah herself, it is the optimal move to keep David till the final four, only to cut him there. And really, for me, I just feel like there's less strategic holes in Hannah's game. Troy, I think a lot of her loss really just comes down to perception. The fact that they perceived her as this very wishy-washy, neurotic girl that didn't know what she was doing, when I think that's just an incorrect read of her. And I think the fact that Adam gets so much credit than her at the end is largely misguided, from my point of view. Considering a lot of Adam's play that he gets more credit for is essentially him failing at the things that he's trying to do. In the time that actually happens and David going home, the jury for some reason gives him all the credit for it when it's an obvious situation of the reason why it happened is because Hannah allowed it to happen. That's why the other situations didn't happen is because Adam didn't have the capital in the game to make it happen. And again, like to me, I just think it's a pretty easy Hannah vote from my point of view, but obviously I'm probably in the minority. Next up, we got Game Changers, Sarah versus Brad versus Troyzan, and this is a pretty easy Sarah vote. Now again, the one knock against Sarah is the fact that she survived advantage getting in a position where she did actually have the majority of the votes during that round. Mind you, it was a 3-2-1 in a position where Sarah obviously knew she had safety no matter what, so it obviously doesn't really incentivize her to play extremely hard to get those votes away from her. I don't really fault her too, too much for that happening here, but again, she was obviously in the know for more of the game. She flip-flopped between alliances surprisingly successfully throughout most of the game. So Brad was on the bottom for a lot of it, needed to win certain comps. Troyzan was just kind of there for a lot of the season, so again, my vote would easily go to Sarah here. Next up for HHH, and here we have Ben versus Chrissy versus Ryan, and again, I feel like my opinion back then was controversial, but I'm sticking by it. I would vote for Ryan of these three. Again, Ben obviously need idols, plus also a impromptu fire-making challenge for him to win, so again, I'm not going to vote for that. While against Chrissy, I do feel like it's much closer. Now, I think Chrissy is probably more out in front for the post-merge phase of the game. However, I do think a lot of the reason why they bond to begin with is because of the work that Ryan does. And also considering they get to the end game with Devin, who was closer to Ryan than he was to Chrissy, and also even Ben was closer to Ryan by the end than Chrissy. Again, I do feel like I would personally vote for Ryan here. So I will say I don't think it's as big of a difference as I used to think. I used to think I would vote for Ryan easily of the three, but at this point, I do think it is pretty close, but I do think it is those very minute details that make me vote for Ryan. However, again, in an instance where if it had been between Ben and Chrissy, that vote would obviously easily go to Chrissy in that position. Next up for Survivor Ghost Island, we have Wendell versus Dominic versus Laurel, and I think here my vote would easily go to Dominic. I do think Dominic played the stronger all-around game than Wendell. I mean, Wendell does squeak it out by the very, very end, though again, very narrowly. Though again, I just feel like Dominic was in more of a power position for a lot of the game. He seemed to be the one that was more actively making these strategic bonds with the other players. Even Laurel, who later has a closer personal bond with Wendell, was brought into the alliance by Dominic. Now again, you could definitely fault Dominic for burning some jury votes at the very end and him not securing other jury votes in the way that he should. But I do think coming into Final Tribal, I would definitely be very pro-Dominic of the two, especially considering Dominic seemed to be more willing willing to cut Wendell earlier on than Wendell was, where Wendell didn't seem to want to do it until the very last second, while Dominic just simply never had the opportunity to get rid of Wendell, who seemed to be willing to do so from a little bit earlier on. And to me, I think it's a pretty easy Dominic vote, but really either of them are very solid winners anyway. Next up for Survivor David versus Goliath, and here we have Nick versus Mike versus Angelina, and my opinion still holds, I would vote for Mike. Now, I mean, knowing what I know now, I'd probably be less likely to vote for Nick, but again, like Nick does have some impressive aspects to his game. Particularly, like, the middle of his game, I think, is very impressive. I mean, obviously, you do have the minority vote split, which is a very impressive move. You have the fact that he wasn't really even targeted until the final six despite the fact that he was clearly one of the bigger players on the David side of things. But, I mean, there is that. The fact that he went out from the final six on. Now, I think there's a world where he still makes it to the end, but it definitely would have been a rockier path there. And even beyond that, again, he potentially would have been the first boot. But even then, like, he loses control of the Carl vote and loses Davey when he doesn't want to. Again, there are many points where I feel like Nick doesn't get his way in comparison to Mike, who I think plays a pretty stable game throughout most of it. Now, again, there's obviously points after the merge where things don't go his way, like when John Hannigan gets taken out and when Dan gets taken out. But I think immediately following that, I think his game recovers and he really just dominates the end game. From final nine on, he's in pretty much full control of what's happening, which is really impressive work there. And I just feel like his game is a lot less rocky than Nick's was. So again, for me, I think my vote would still go to Mike. Now for Edge of Extinction. Now we're finally at the point where these are the seasons that I have not talked through before. So here we do have Chris versus Gavin versus Julie. And 
I would easily vote for Gavin. Now, it's funny because when you're looking back at my Edge of Extinction review at the time of the season, I had this massive rant against Gavin being frustrated at the game he played. And to be fair, I still stick by some of those opinions. But again, in comparison to Julie or Chris, I mean, I would still vote for Gavin. I mean, Chris got voted out third and came back at the very end. Julie didn't really seem to have much agency throughout the back portion of the game. Again, Gavin was at least in the know of everything that was going on. He was pretty central to the game from a social perspective where he had very close relationships to the likes of Lauren, to Victoria, even to Aurora. Like, he was in a very good position in the game. The problem is, again, I wish he did more with that positioning, but still, again, against the other two, I think it's a pretty easy Gavin vote. Next up for IOI, we have Tommy versus Dean versus Nora, and if you've heard me talk about this season before it should be pretty clear I would vote for Tommy I think Tommy plays one of the most impressive games really in Survivor history again it is a game where he faces so much adversity and despite that is able to overcome it every single turn despite that adversity coming through no fault of his own him simply just getting unlucky with certain tribe swaps or how certain other aspects of the game play out and Tommy essentially just runs the game from the merge on whether there are people that criticize the fact that he got very close to losing against Lauren or Janet the thing is he was again never really gonna get to the end with them considering the fact that he always planned on cutting them at final six and final five but through the Dan Spilo ejection he had to be forced to take them out at five and four which were definitely more precarious but again that was the adversity he faced and was able to overcome he also gets extremely close to being voted out at the split tribal a situation where again he just gets extremely unlucky in the draw and despite that is still able to overcome that despite being swapped away from literally all of his allies and being put on a group containing all members of the opposing tribe also post the initial swap they were tied in numbers and even then coming to the first vote they were supposed to have the numbers until the last second where elaine gets an advantage out of nowhere and that causes that vote to go amok and again like there's just so many points where Tommy gets so unlucky and despite that perseveres through it in comparison to Dean and Nora I don't really feel like they're anywhere particularly close to Tommy's game again my vote would go to Tommy next for winners at war we got Tony versus Nally versus Michelle and this is not anywhere close my vote would go to Tony Ozzy Nally was voted out first and came back at the very end played a really bad game after she came back too so again no real chance I'm voting for her Michelle also I don't think played particularly well either again like a lot of people gave her a lot more credit after winners at war I feel like winners at war more so proved to me that she simply doesn't have it strategically for a while she's had two deep runs now both of those runs were runs where she had very low control over how either of those seasons played out and even on this season she gets very fortunate in her even getting to the end where had it not been for edge of extinction she wouldn't have gotten to the end anyway while tony again plays a really dominant game I and mean, to me the sophie vote is still one of the most impressive single maneuvers in any survivor game and he really ends up running the table from that point on and only faces adversity due to the edge of extinction and even then perseveres through that again to me tony plays a mashed game on the season he easily gets my vote now we're on to the new era where from survivor 41 we do have erica versus the sean versus xander and this is a situation where i remember i believe at the time that the season originally finished airing i was definitely pro to sean in this final three however i was wrong I would now vote for Erica. I do think Erica, now having listened to all the exit press and knowing more about how the game played out, it's really not particularly close. I think Erica is easily my vote here. Now, again, I think there are things to call of Erica's game, particularly the fact that we're going to throw the immunity challenge pre-merge to vote her out, though, again, supposedly that's not true and they were going to vote out Sydney instead. You also have the merge round where, again, she seemed to be the initial target, though, again, she seemed to be the initial target because she was exiled. So, and there's things to the merit of those things. And really, from the Shan vote on, I do think she really just runs the game. I think she is in full control of what's happening. I mean, at least up to the final four, where there I would give it more credit to just Xander making a bad move than Erica really convinced him to do anything there but still I, I think erica plays a very solid game on this season a pretty solid middle tier game all while deshaun again needed force fire making to get to the end also probably goes home if do or die didn't exist also gets very fortunate he didn't blow up his game at the final six when fighting against erica there again like even though i do think deshaun plays a pretty strong game up until the shan vote i think his game just completely crumbles at the end there to where i think it's tough to vote for him and then xander was never really that much of a consideration for me so again I personally would vote for Erica here. Next up for Survivor 42, we have Marianne versus Mike versus Romeo. And obviously it's between Mike and Marianne. And I 
think I would still vote Mike if I was on the island. Now, I think it is pretty close because I think Marianne obviously has a good final trial performance. I think Marianne clearly had more awareness of her game. However, her game on paper, though, to me, is not particularly strong. It's a game where she's on the bottom of the Takus and would have been voted out had they ever gone to another tribal, but just never did. She's then not really in any power structure post-merge, is kind of just being dragged along. She's then really not involved in any real majority alliance post-merge and is kind of just there until the point where she obviously makes the move to take out Omer, which is a good move, but it's also a move that technically Mike also wanted to make and simply just didn't make it because he didn't recognize the fact that they could still make it due to the fact that Marianne had her extra vote. So again, like, am I really going to credit Marianne so much for just having an extra vote that no one else knew about? And even then, she wanted to keep Lindsay at final five and that was really misguided. So again, I do think there's a lot of holes to pick in Marianne's game. While with Mike, again, there's also holes to pick. I mean, I do think he was in a pretty good position on his original tribe. Gets kind of screwed over by Jenny getting taken out in the way that she does, but even then recovers pretty well, takes out Daniel. Come into the merge, he's in the majority alliance, builds really good one-on-one -on -one bonds. Though his game really starts to unravel when he takes out high. Again, a move that was seemingly made due to really emotional reasons. He is essentially saved by Omer at the final seven. And again, like his game is not particularly great either. But I do think I would vote for Mike. I do think Mike was in the no for more of the game. Mike was in the majority alliance for more of the game. Mike was in a safer spot pre-merge than Marianne early on in the game. So again, I do think my vote would go to Mike, but I do think it's a pretty close one. Next up for 43, and here we do have Gabler versus Cassidy versus Owen. And to me, I think all three of these options are pretty bad. Now, I'm completely nullifying Owen. I would never vote for Owen. I think Owen had very little agency in the game, really up until the very end, to which the amount of agency he had at the very end was pretty much the same as Cassidy and Gabler. So I do think it's between Cassidy and Gabler. And to be honest, I think it's extremely close between the two. I mean, Gabler is someone that was more involved in Cody and Jesse's plans towards the end game. And considering they were running a lot of the post-merge game, I think that's something to give him a bit more credit for. However, I do look at Cassidy as the better all-around player. I do think Cassidy had more of a core alliance for more of the game, where Gabler was kind of just by himself for a lot of the early game. So yeah, I do think it's extremely close. I do think I would lean towards Cassidy, though, where, again, it's so close to me to where I think the way I would determine it is simply by just who I think the better player is, to which, again, my gut would tell me that it is Cassidy. But again, there really isn't that big of a difference between our games to me, to where I don't really have a strong opinion on who I really would have wanted to win here. With that, we now get to Survivor 44, where here we have Jam Jam versus Heidi versus Carolyn, and this one's a pretty easy Jam Jam vote for me. Again, I wouldn't vote for Heidi. Heidi was kind of aloof for a lot of the back portion of the game. Uh, between Jam Jam and Carolyn, again, I've said this before, I think my issue with Carolyn is the fact that she just didn't really seem to actually have much control in the game. While she was working alongside the Tika 3, it seemed like she was the least integral to the Tika 3's success. She was simply just kind of there, while Jam Jam and Carson were the ones more involved, building relationships with Jamie and Lauren that actually got them through the final seven round. They also faced a lot more adversity through the game that he was able to overcome. Again, survives over Matt, survives the vote between him and Josh, despite the fact that it should have been pretty clear that Jam Jam was the bigger threat of the bunch. And again, I do lean towards voting for Jam Jam here. Now, I think there's an argument that Carolyn might be the better strategic thinker of the two, especially considering Jam Jam's insistence that he wanted to go to final three with Carson, which seemed pretty misguided. But I still think as a whole, in this situation, I would still end up voting for Jam Jam. Now for the most recent season of the show survivor 45 where here we obviously have d versus austin versus jake and i mean this is not that difficult of one for me i would have voted for d now i do think coming into like the final seven round i do think it actually would have been close between d and austin i actually think at that point i probably would have voted austin i do think austin was safer throughout a lot of that portion of the game where i don't think anyone's really bringing him up even as a target while also was someone that was pretty integral to what was going on he pulled in emily he really led the kelly vote alongside drew while d again did didn't want Kelly to go. D made some moves I didn't fully agree with along the way, and it was also being looked at as a big target. I do think it's the final six and final seven rounds where I'm very much switching to D again. D obviously just completely snows Austin during the Emily vote, and Austin ends up really dropping the ball there and telling D the information that allows her to tell Julie to use the idol, and then in the final six round, obviously she flips to take out Drew to weaken Austin. Now again, I think you could definitely qualify the final five round where really I feel like that's a round where like pretty much no one is playing well, but I guess Austin's playing the best of the the people that are not playing well.
well there. And D obviously just like almost gets taken out there. But still, it's like a situation where they all knew that D was the biggest threat. And for some reason, Austin still wanted to go to the end with D. I, I feel like I still would lean towards D, especially considering how she was able to navigate through that threat level that she had. Even though I do think the final five round was very lucky on her end. But she still completely outplays Austin during the final six and final seven rounds, which for me is enough to make her my pick here. But there we go. I mean, that is my who would I vote for for Survivor US. Or again, moving forward, I'll still continue to do more of these for the other shows that I cover. And in general, I'll be also updating a lot of the other videos I did in my first year of the channel. Again, I'll be updating my season winner rankings after Survivor 46. So stay tuned for those down the road. But for now, that is the video. Thank you for watching.